Hello, 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 ladies. Hello, hello. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm not going to put on my glasses until y'all pop in. Then it's Valentine's Day. I want to just love on me a little bit. And if you come in, and I know you will, even if you see it afterwards, I want to thank you for joining my live, for watching and showing it some love on this Valentine's Day. Uh, I hope, I hope, I hope you know the drill. You got up, you prayed, and you meditated. Most of all today, I hope you got up and you loved on your Jesus and you loved on yourself, ladies. I want to say happy Valentine's Day to the couples. Uh, if you are coupled up, this is what love is all about. God said it's not good for man to be alone. Neither is it good for woman to be alone. Come on, we go together, guys, like peanut butter and jelly. So I just want to say happy Valentine's Day to the married couples, to the engaged couples. Love is a beautiful beautiful things and it should be celebrated it should be celebrated for couples and it should be celebrated because jesus loved us remember we are loved as single women we are loved we are loved as well we have no reason not to feel the wonderful joy and <laughs> look beautiful on this holiday because we are the chosen lovers of christ so i just want to um Today, again, wish you guys happy Valentine's Day. And I also wanted to continue, guys, as always, 5 to 6 p.m. on Sundays. I am going to be leveling up with the Mosaic Bible study. Y'all got to forgive me. I'm, I'm just, I've been messing with this hair. <laughs> I love it, but I'm kind of ready to do something different. I love it. I love it. Remember, today is about that love. So, again, I want to thank you guys for joining me last week, the week before. I want to thank you. If you watch the video after the fact, I want to thank you. Remember, I am here doing what I've been assigned to do, doing what God has called me to do and doing what I, hello, love. And I love, I love, I love bringing forth the word of God in a way that's unique, in a way that is authentic to who I am and a, a way that I know in my heart uh, I actually feel authentic when I bring it to you. And how is that? Basically me doing what I love to do most, and that is teach and empower. Uh, even in my own uh, need for encouragement, I, I find myself encouraging others because um, when we encourage others, we we get encouraged ourselves. So uh, I want to encourage you, never, ever, ever stop encouraging. And when you don't feel um, at your best, that's the best time to encourage someone else. So uh, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it as always. I thank you and I love you for coming and joining me for this Mosaic Level Up, Level Up Bible Study. Again, it happens every Sunday, 5 to 6 p.m. This month, all throughout the month of February, since it's the month of love and love is in the air, we're going to talk about love. We're not going to shy away from love because uh, the fact that we're not wives at the time, but I want you to know that we are wives. We are Christ's wives. We are brides of Christ. So we have a title. It might not be on earth as of yet, but we have a title. We are the bride of Christ. So you have to enjoy the love of the love giver. Okay. Um, so again, this month, we're going to be talking about uh, love and renewing your mind uh, because I believe all that goes together. You know, I think uh, yesterday when I was scrolling through Instagram, which I, you know, some days when I'm not posting, I'm kind of scrolling through, checking out posts, giving some love. Um, I was uh, scrolling through. It was pretty late last night uh, because after I did my little photo shoot here and um I was kind of exhausted, you know, but I had a great time, but it was a good exhaustion. So what I usually do then is I just kind of blank and, you know, just kind of go through Instagram and I'll, you know, see what you guys have been doing and get caught up on giving you some love. So last night when I was doing that, 
I came across, and you guys want to check her out. It's uh, at Sadie, I think Sadie underscore May writer, uh, Sadie underscore ri- underscore writer. So, yeah, S-A-D-I-E underscore May writer. Or maybe it's uh, at writer Sadie May. I don't know, but check it out either way. But um, I love what she was talking about yesterday. I, again, that word love is just popping out, guys. But we're going to get to the Bible story here real quick. I just wanted to show her some love on what she posted because it was so true. It was so authentic. It was so necessary uh, to hear. Um but it was it was definitely empowering. It was empowering for women to hear that uh, as mothers. And I never want, you know, anyone to hear my lives or anything that I'm doing and think that I'm not about the men because I am. I have grandsons that I love very, very much. I have son-in-laws that I love very, very much. Uh, I have brothers that I love very, very much. And I'm hopeful for my my uh, pairing of uh, of my husband when he finds me. Remember, when he finds a wife, he finds a good thing. So um, I don't ever want you to think that, oh, you know, no, there's my scars. When I say scars, scars, uh, I talk about the fact that I'm not perfect. I I like to show you the imperfections in me. Uh, like my post yesterday. Okay. Sometimes I like to just come on and let people know, Hey, I'm a real, like, don't think that you're going to see me like this all the time, because I feel like when it's love, remember, we, we're going to go back over, you know, first Corinthians, uh, chapter 13, when it's real love, then it, it never fails. So it doesn't matter how I look, you should love me. But anyway, let me go back to Sadie. I haven't forgot. Um, she posted yesterday, um, about, mothers and how we break our children and how we don't realize uh, the effects of breaking our children. And and I think she came to a realization that I think she, her son said something to her and uh, it just, you know, or it was a situation, uh, I believe. And I'm saying this because she put it on Instagram and, and she didn't go into details and she didn't have to. It was just very, very, I thought it was very big of her just to, um, Talk about it because, again, a lot of things that we need to heal from as women, we are unwilling to talk about it. And it's a lot of times it's because they are painful things. And again, like I said, when you hear me say scars, scars, it's not about being perfect. It's about the fact that I have been through some things and I've healed from some things. And at the end of the day, I still have reminders. I still have, you know, um, uh, you know, God is never done with us. We're always in just different levels in our processing up to get us where he wants us to, to be sufficient on the earth, because I don't believe there is no perfect person. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. So I just love the fact, again, there's that word love. Love is in the air. <laughs> scars, scars, no pieces, beautiful pieces that she gave us yesterday. Um, and it might even be the day before. Remember, guys, I sometimes I kind of scroll through Instagram. I have to get caught up. So um, I gave her some love yesterday on that post. But I just thought it was real authentic. You could tell that she was really trying to impact the kingdom. And you could tell she was really trying to help some women. I know it helped me to hear that because just yesterday, actually, uh my daughter and I, which we both do the boutique together. This is our boutique. And, uh, you know, you know how tension can rise sometimes with mom and daughter. I'm just going to keep it real. And it wasn't a bad tension or anything, but she had come in. We were doing the little photo shoot and she had come in and she just started bossing things around. And it just irritated me for a second. So before I knew it, I mentioned how she used to be or, or what I felt. And, you know, basically... At the time, I didn't know I was accusing her and she was just basically verbalizing something. But I was accusing her of basically being mean. And, uh, you know, she, oh, mama, don't get in your feelings. Don't. I, that's not how I meant it. And I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to be in my feelings for that minute. I, I wanted to be upset, you know, because I was like, how dare you, you know. So long story short, a couple of minutes later, I did the exact same thing that she did. Like, literally, I did. 
I did the exact same thing. I called her out on something and I did it as, oh, that's how you always do things. And she was like, mama, didn't you just tell me not to do that to you? So I was like, oh, smack, you know, and I quickly recovered. I, I, I quickly apologized to her and I said, you know what, babe, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I mean, you know, so when Sadie posted that, I just thought that was like, wow. I mean, that's how God does. He'll confirm his word. He confirms when he is in the process of healing you. When you are loved by God, you there is nothing missing in the kingdom, nothing wasted in the kingdom. God is thrifty. Okay, nothing, everything has a purpose and a repurpose in it. So uh, I just love that she did that. I thought I wanted to, you know, show her some love out Shout out on that. And after this, when I finish with this live, and y'all know I'm going to post it, I will put her name uh, in the post, you know, so that way I can, um, you can maybe go and take a look at it if you're interested in it. You know, there's a lot of women on here, guys, that are not, you know, celeb status, but God has called at, at this time, remember 2021, he's coming for the one. He's coming for the one. And if you're always, you know, if they have to have so many likes and, you know, the person have to be popular in order for you to listen, you're going to miss out on God because he don't deal in numbers like we do. He doesn't deal in numbers. So there's a lot of great women that are on Instagram that are not getting their credit for speaking as God give it to them. So I would suggest, you know, you show some people some love, man, in an authentic, real way, you know, not because someone looks good that you, you stop and listen, you know, it's time to get to real love, real love, like real, real love. So with that said, I think that's a great segment in guys to me to uh, let's go back over first Corinthians chapter 13. Guys, remember, we've been talking about love uh, the week before we talked about the woman with the issue of blood. And we started this month off with renewing our mind because it's so important that you renew your mind before you try to get in love. OK, I know a lot of us as single women, you know, uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not so like I used to be, you know, I need a mate. I need a mate. No, because I, I'm enjoying what God is doing, what he's taking out of me to prepare me for my husband, what he's doing to get me to a level where this time I can really hear him and know if this is the man for me and I'm not so rushed to be uh, married or paired up with someone that I'm actually able to reject what is not real love. Okay. So, uh, you know, this month I'm focusing, you know, on things that we have to do to get ready for, let's say next Valentine's ladies, you know, I mean, so a man thinking, so is he, you know, asking you shall be given, you know, it's nothing wrong with you wanting love from a mate. You know, we have to dismiss that, you know, oh girl, you don't need a man. No, no, no. God said it's not good for you to be alone. Okay. But there is a time where God needs you to be alone so he can speak into you. And so that you can stop dealing with the fake love and get to the real love. So with that said, um, like I said, for the month of February, love is all in the air. So I decided to start the month off with renewing your mind. And we were talking about the issue, the woman with the issue of blood. And that was in Mark chapter five, verse 33. Uh, but you can start at about verse 24 and read all the way uh, down to 33 or 34. So Mark chapter five, start at about 24. You're going to get catch a little bit of that story right before her, her story, but you'll get the substance of what that, that whole, you know, part of that story is about. I, I, that's interesting, especially, Especially when we're talking about love, okay? And how that relates to love is the fact that this woman recognized that one, she had a problem. Two, who could heal her problem? Who she went to? Three, she didn't worry about what nobody thought when she realized who Jesus was. He was on her block. And four, she didn't care how she had to get her healing. She crawled. OK, she crawled through the crowd, but most of all, she was out in the daytime at a time in those times where it would have been, you know, shameful for a woman to be out in the crowd, you know, menstruating, you know, bleeding. And, you know, it just wasn't proper. But this lady did not care. I mean, she had a renewed position in her mind. She hadn't renewed it just yet, but maybe she had. OK, I ain't gonna say she hadn't, but 
she was at a point where this woman was, hey, whatever it takes. And I think I've said it before on some of my lives. We have to be crawlers in the kingdom. You have to crawl to get to your healing. So we talked about her in the beginning of the month. Then we hit, we started kind of, we go, we started, you know, going into first Corinthians chapter 13 when we went into love. Okay. And Again, I read verse one through, I believe, eight last week uh, due to the time restraining. I'm going to try to keep it short, guys, because it is Valentine's Day. And I know that, you know, maybe people just lounging if nothing else. Um, so, anywho, we're going to go to first Corinthians chapter 13 and we're going to start at verse nine, uh, verse one through eight. If you can, because this is really interesting, ladies, single women, if we if we want to get to love, then we have to know real love. OK, and today I'm going to introduce you into the giver of love versus the give to be loved. OK, but let's go to first Corinthians 13. Uh, we're going to start at verse uh, nine. OK, and remember, this is all about love. Well, let's see. Let's go to seven. I'm going to give you a little bit of seven, okay? Uh, all right. Verse seven says, and we're talking about love, okay? So just put love in front of this. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether where there, there are prophecies, they will fail. Where, where there are is knowledge, it will vanish. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man or woman, I put away childish things. I just, you know, I threw it out. You know, I mean, God is thrifty, but he don't keep the dumb stuff. You know, it's just, it's not wasted. He just don't deal with it. Okay. Um, so I put away childish things for now. We see in a mirror dimly, dimly in a mirror, you know, a mirror has a reflection. Okay. So that's kind of deep. Think about that for now. We see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also know and now abide. Now we're at, uh, 13, first Corinthians 13, chapter 13, verse 13. I stopped guys. Cause I want you to, to digest this. Okay. It says, and again, you can just put love in your mind in front of this and now abide. So these are the most important things that this scripture is talking about and what the combinations are to love. Okay. And now abide faith. Okay. Hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these in love. So hope, faith, and love. That's what first Corinthians 13, uh, chapter 13 ends with. And it's a real quick read guys. It's 13 verses, you know, um, uh, but it ends with just basically summing it up. Say, if you don't remember anything, okay, these are the three components. Okay. That will, that, th that go together, faith, hope, and love. But it says of these things of your faith, you know, oh, I can move a mountain. Okay. That's good. That's cool. Move a mountain. That's good. Uh, I'm going to keep believing. Okay. Uh, that's good. That, Cause you need that. You need that. We need the faith. We need the hope we need, but then you actually have a bad attitude towards somebody. You're mean, you're honorary. You haven't renewed your mind. Then you have not love. And that's the most important of those three, because you don't have love. You got faith, you got hope, but you don't have love because it's not presenting itself as first Corinthians chapter 13. Again, it went over what love is not. Okay. It went over love and what love is not and what love is. It says, I'm going to just, I'm going to hit down. I'm going to get you about, uh, we're going to go over verse five. Okay. It says, a love does not behave rudely. 
It does not seek its own, its own. It is not provoked, thinks no evil. So if you got a bad attitude, you rude to people, you don't even consider anyone. I'm not saying you got to be mushy, mushy at everybody, you know. You got to have a, a certain amount of discernment and understanding how to deal with certain people. I get that. But you, I don't believe you ever have to be rude. You never have to just hit somebody over the head with a comment. I think you can always deliver it nicely and still be firm, you know. So, again, you know, it, it says that love is not rude, okay? When you rude, you rude. And a lot of times, a lot of people know they rude. They just, they've decided that that's part of their personality. Well, the Bible right here says it, okay? First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, okay? So, if you being rude, that, that's not showing love, you know? Again, you don't have to be all mushy. You don't have to, you know, but there is something to be said when you can just say something that hurts someone's feelings or it, you have no filter to what you say. You know, that's a it's a selfishness. And, and it talks about that, you know. Um, so, again, you know, in order to get to love, in order to get to love, you have to actually want to be loved and the only way you you want to be loved is your mind has have to be renewed you have to renew that mind like we talked about in the beginning you know uh you, you have to want it bad enough to understand that it don't matter how many times love failed well love never fails because it says it in here okay first corinthians says it. uh first corinthians 13 says it but as many times as you might have thought you failed at love you really didn't fail at love as many times as you thought you lost love you probably didn't lose it. If you measured up against what the Bible says love was, if it was rude, if it was self-seeking, if it didn't suffer with you, like didn't go through things, it wasn't, you didn't lose anything. Okay. Uh, if you are the person that is rude and that you are the person that, uh, you know, you, you just don't tolerate anything. You don't, you're not willing to go through anything with anyone because you just don't have time for nobody. Then you're probably needing to heal. You need to go back and renew your mind so you can come up and get first Corinthians 13 and get some love in your heart to be able to be loved in the sense. I mean, you are loved. Let me, let me rewind. But what I'm saying is in order to, have people to see it so that they want it. You know, not everybody. I mean, some people will partner up and friendship up with anybody, you know, but I know for me, I, I pick my, my friendships and my, in these times of my life, I'm not going to say I've always done it, you know, and I've learned and that's where a lot of my scars came from, you know, but uh, in this go around, now that I have the knowledge, I know uh, I choose wisely who becomes my friend and who, I actually allow in my counsel, the Bible tells us that, you know, you don't want to be around wicked counsel or foolish counsel. So, um, you know, you really want to, you know, level up and get the real type of love. So, but in light again, I'm on, I'm not going to be on here long guys. Uh, and I want to be able to get out of here. Uh, but I do want to be obedient and do what he asked me to do and be consistent. And like I said, you know, I, I know that, obedience is better than sacrifice. So it doesn't matter that I'm here. It's just the fact that I'm doing what he asked me to do. So, um, and ending this guys, I just want to give you some nuggets because the Lord gave me this this morning and I was like, okay, God, how do I spend this? How do I, but it kept coming in my heart. He kept giving it to me and he was just pouring it into me to give it back to you guys. And the great thing about it is it was going right in alignment with what we're talking about in love. So the Lord said, you know, Tell them the giver of love versus the give to be loved. That right there to me was like God saying, you know, let them know that I'm the giver of love. Okay. So you don't have to do anything to be loved. You don't have to sleep with a guy to be loved. You know, you don't have to buy someone's uh, love. You shouldn't have to beg for someone's love. Again, that's the give to be loved. And God says, I am the giver of love. So you don't have to do anything. Christ paid it all. He's thrifty. God is thrifty. It costs you nothing to be loved. It costs Christ everything. He paid it. Okay. So God said, tell him the giver of love versus the gift to be loved. Ladies, I want y'all to think about that. Are you giving to be loved? Do you have that, you know, that friend that you, you know, uh, 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 
there's never any reciprocation of love. It's always you being the one to love her more, encourage her more. I mean, yes, there's a point where, you know, we want to be Christ-like and keep loving people. But, you know, some of that trying to be too much like Christ will break you. And Christ is Christ. He died. He he was the perfect. We're not perfect. So at one point, you got to give people over to Christ. You got to keep praying for them. We never stop praying for people. But you don't have to constantly try to give give something to be loved because that's a, that's a broken piece, too. And um, most likely, that's a piece that you need to heal. In order to really know real love versus fake love. Because if you're giving to be loved, then you don't really know love. Because again, 1 Corinthians 13 says, love don't do that. You know, love don't, don't, uh, let me see what it said. If we compare, love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. And it is not puffed up. So, uh Somebody being mean to you and you study giving to try to get them. That's not love. That that's if it's a man doing it for a woman, a woman doing it for a man, a girlfriend, you know, like a home, you know, your sister friend trying to do it for another sister friend. No, that's not you. You know, you, you, you're you're dealing in your brokenness of love. So you need to heal. You need to crawl. You need to renew your mind. You need to come and get into this first Corinthians 13. You need to gauge it. And, and everybody that you say you love or love you before you say I do go back to first Corinthians 13 and check. Do your checklist, you know, and see, is this love God? Is this guy rude? Is he, you know, I mean, if I run out of gas, is he willing to come and get me? Is he willing to make sacrifice to call someone if he's at work and he can't like, do he really get in there with me or does he leave it up to me to figure it out? And then he makes it seem like he's so busy that he don't have time for it, but yet he doesn't stretch to see how, you know, she's out there. She needs me. You know, women, single women, we got to understand there's little clues you can pick up to let you know that that man, he's not the one. You know, because if you run out of gas or if your car breaks down or you don't have groceries and you got children and this man call himself loving you or wanting you or trying to be with you. And he just come in your house and he see you cooking eggs every time for them kids. And, you know, he come over there and he fool. He didn't already ate. That's because he's not loving you. You are giving to be loved. OK, you're broken. And you're probably dealing with a broken man because a man that is set up and mistreat a woman, he broke in himself. OK, so again, the giver of love versus the get the give to be love. Uh, another sign of that little, you know, of the parallel to that is people pleasing. You know, uh, if you're a people pleaser, you're probably a give to be loved. OK. Oh, I'm going to do this so they'll like me, you know, and that'll just keep going and going and going, you know, and that's going to lead you in a vicious cycle. <laughs> I mean, you know, and then eventually you're going to be really bitter because nothing's working out like the, you know, you go from man to man to man, you know, no man will stick with you. Uh, your homegirls, you know, that you thought was your homegirls. They just, you know, they go to the good parties and, and not call you. They only call you when it's the party that they want to help you. They want you to pay, you know, so uh, you got to be careful for pleasing people. That is a scar to a mosaic. And, and it's no, it's not a scar. Let me let me take that back. It is, it, it's literally a piece that is apart from the mosaic. Like she, it's not even, you're not even allow God to put it in his hands. You're, you're trying to do it on your own. Okay. Remember a mosaic is not perfect and we all break and it's okay if we break because our breakthrough comes from our breaking. But when you're people pleasing, that means you are so into what people think that you don't sit in silence or you don't reflect on your day to see what God thinks of your day and how you reacted because you're always thinking about what did, you know, I wonder if my, my, my sister, I wonder if my auntie liked that. I wonder if he, you know, no, you got to reflect on your day. Like, you know, I mean, God, let me see. I think I did good. God, I pray I did good, you know? So, uh, people pleasing, that is the, the gift to be love and you should be doing it you know, you should be thinking of the giver of love. OK, um, we also talked about last week, you know, uh, Peter and the beggar. If we look at people pleasing, if Peter had been a people pleaser, then um, 
And that was in, I believe, Acts chapter 3, verse 6, guys. Uh, I just kind of grabbed that that part of that uh, chapter because that's the part where he actually told him, silver and gold I have not, but what I give you, uh, I give you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he healed him. He told him to get up and walk. So what I'm, my point that I'm making there is the fact that if Peter had been a people pleaser, remember, Peter was on his way into worship and he saw the beggar, okay? And he was with someone, you know, so if he was worried about what the person he was with was going to think of him, if he stopped or, you know, even gay acknowledge the beggar, then he wouldn't have did the Lord's work. He wouldn't have helped somebody that God had intended for him to help with the power and authority that God had placed in his hand. It wasn't the money because Peter told him, I ain't got no money, man. Like I don't, what you, you want this healing? Okay, I got this healing. I can, you know, and that's how it is for us. You know, sometimes you don't have anything to give anyone, but what you do have is powerful. You got prayer, you got faith, you got hope and you got love. Okay, remember, first Corinthians 13 says it. those are and love is the greatest. So if you don't always have money, then don't worry about it. Put some prayer on. If that person refuses you praying, they didn't want you. They wanted what you were going to give them. So you got to understand people pleasers. At one point, people pleasing will, will, will be flipped to please people, okay? Basically, you'll become the beggar, okay? At one point, you're you're trying to make sure that they're pleased and you're doing everything you can, but then you'll start getting rejected and then you'll become the beggar. You'll be pleasing people. Please, please, will you please come with me? Can you please help me out? Will you please call me back? See, mm-mm. people pleaser turn into please people. I don't mean like, please. I mean like you'll become the please, please. Okay. You'll everything. Can you please help me out? Please. I prompt. I play. No, you, mm -mm, that's because you've been a people pleaser. Now you flip to please people. Okay. Um, so, uh, and I'm going to end this guys in a little bit, but then John 10, 10. Okay. When we talk about love, the giver of love, the Bible says in John 10, 10, I came to give you so that you'll have life and you'll have it more abundantly. That's God says, I'm the giver. I can give you the abundance of life. I can give you all the love you want. I can give you all the money you want. I can give you all the friends you want. I can give you all the joy you want, all the peace, all the love. I come to do that. Okay. I've come to do that. Again, you're loved. This Valentine's Day, you are loved. Okay. Uh, then John chapter 14, 15 through 17. The Bible says, uh, God tells us if you love me, because now guys remember you know, if we're going to please someone, we're going to please God. We're going to please people. So God tells us in John chapter four, verse 15 through 17, he says, if you love me, you will obey me. You'll obey me. You'll do what I ask you to, you know, not, not because, you know, well, he is God, you know, we worship and praise him because he is God and God alone. But the fact of the matter is God says, if you love me, you know, I, I shouldn't have to beg you to do something because I'm God. I'm the giver, whatever you ask, you know, the Bible tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. So God is saying, just, just, you know, just do as I ask you to. I got this, you know, no worries. Remember we talked about that. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry. Just let me, you know, just let me take care of you, but obey me and, and stay within obedience. Uh, because again, that's love, love come with obedience. Even when you get married, you know, and wives, uh, that have husbands, husbands that have wives, obedience is part of a marriage relationship. Uh, uh, the husband must submit to his wife. The wife must submit. There's an obedience, you know, if he says, well, baby, we're on a budget, you know, because we we're trying to fix the car or we're trying to, you know, fix the roof or we're trying to save for a vacation in obedience and in participation and love to be in agreement. She's going to obey her husband to get to that vacation or to get that car fixed. It's going to be for a purpose. Okay. Uh, so God is saying he, he, he wants the same thing. And it's important because God again, uh, is the giver. Okay. So you don't, nothing wasted in the kingdom and there's no, um, there's no opportunity that you're going to lose when it comes to God, because 
again, he's the giver. Hello, giver, giver. So, but anywho, then uh, in ending, guys, and I am going to end. I'm going to end. I guess a lot of you guys are going to watch this after the fact, but that's okay because I'm being obedient. <laughs> I'm being obedient. Okay, so John uh, chapter 21, verse 17. And in this verse, and again, guys, when I'm giving you the scripture and the verse, and the, the book and the scripture and the verse, you can go back and read the whole chapter. I mean, it's always good to do that so you can get the substance of it. And again, we talked about on here, always check confirmation. You shouldn't let anyone just give you the word. You should always be a student and you should always speak to God for confirmation because he will give you confirmation. Okay, so in John chapter 21, verse 17, uh, it talks about where Jesus uh, asked Peter several times. Okay. Cause, cause Jesus wanted to confirm with Peter. Okay. He wanted to let him know, you know, it's kind of like when, when you're, you're letting your kids know how important it is to lock the door. Okay. You might say it a couple of times, but you want to make sure because one, maybe cause you know, your child, you know, that they, you know, your child is, they'll just quickly say yes, just to get you to be quiet. Or maybe your child is quickly telling you yes, because they want you to go ahead and go and they can, you know, get into what they want to. So as a parent, you can kind of gauge that. That's something, that's a relationship thing that you start to realize something in a person that you want to make sure they understand it. Not that you're saying they're, they can't get it or that they're dumb, but sometimes there's certain personalities that you want to, you want to kind of let them know, Hey, Hey, I need you to do this. Okay. It's important. You know, so the Bible says in, in, again, in, in John chapter 14, verse 15 through 17, the Bible says that, you know, and this is the amplified version, but he asked Peter three times this three times. He said, Peter, do you love me? Say, yeah, I love you. Okay. He told him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my people, man. So that's what I'm on here doing, you know. Um, all of us have, you know, fall short of something, you know. I told you some of my testimony, and I always share it with you guys. I went through a really bad breaking in my own life uh, due to... You know, I can't always blame it on the domestic violence because after the fact, you know, I was gone away from him. Uh, I just began to, you know, get caught up in the world again. You know, maybe it was some of the healing that I didn't know I needed. Well, I'm sure it is. That's what it was, you know, because, hello, I'm here today, you know, speaking fully on healing and not knowing you're healing. So, but anyhow, um, but Jesus kept asking Peter, you know feed my sheep. So I said all that to say that about me is the fact that I'm here feeding, feeding Jesus sheep, you know, because he, he's asked me to do that several times and, uh, I've made that promise. So I'm here feeding the sheep. I'm here. I'm being obedient. I'm doing what he asked me to do. So, uh, again, because I love him, <laughs> I love him. I am in love with Jesus. I love my Jesus. I love my God. Um, then uh second Corinthians. Now we're gonna end, guys. Second Corinthians uh verse uh chapter nine, second Corinthians, not first Corinthians. We're in first Corinthians 13 talking about love, but now we're in second Corinthians. So go to that next, keep flipping in page forward till you get to second Corinthians, is right after first Corinthians. Second Corinthians verse nine, I mean chapter nine, verse seven. Uh we're gonna talk about, we're gonna end this on that the giver. Versus the give to be loved. And we're going to hit it with why God said you don't want to give to be loved. Don't do that. First of all, God ain't going to accept it. Okay. You can't don't, you know, I know a lot of people will preach and they say, well, you know, get this offering and you're going to get this house. You're going to get blessed. You go, God going to do it. Don't give for that. Don't you let nobody make you think. That if you give something, God has to give it the way that somebody told you. God is the giver and he gives to who he choose. And sometimes there's a wait period way more than when you plant that seed. OK, so when you do plant a seed, which is money and offering, you know, to someone to to further their ministry, to bless their ministry. You do it when your heart tells you and when God tells you that this is where your heart is. Okay. Because let me tell you, second Corinthians chapter nine, verse seven says, uh, 
You know what? Let me go to it because you know what? I don't want to miss it. I, 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 I wrote it down in my little notes because I wanted to brief it. But I'm going to go straight to it, y'all, because I need y'all to hear this. Okay? And then I'm going to get off of here, y'all. Seriously, I'm going to get off of here. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And it reads, y'all, I got my Bible for real. Okay? I'm not Googling nothing. Okay? I ain't Googling nothing. Okay? I can and I do sometimes, but when I am dividing the word, I come and make sure there's no glitches. I want to make sure I'm dividing it. I'm, I, you know, uh, you can't nothing beat that paperback. I'm sorry. You know, just to hold the word, it just feels like, you know, I'm, I'm being a student. You know, you don't go to class. Well, I mean, nowadays they do, but, you know. There's some schools you still got to carry a book. So I'm, I'm always a student to the words. So I keep my Bible. Uh, okay. So second Corinthians chapter nine, verse seven. Here we go. We ready? All right. It says, so let each one as he purposes, that's you, that's me, that's he, that's we, as he purpose in his heart. Not because somebody told you, not because somebody threatened you that you're going to be cursed or you ain't going to be blessed if you don't give because that ain't coming out your heart. That's coming out your fear. OK, again, we should be givers to the kingdom. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, don't stop letting people think that, you know, stop making stop allowing people to give you God. OK, go and take time with God because he loves you. Spend time with your lover. God is our lover. He loves us. So you got to spend time with him, you know, in order to get to, if you, if you meet a, a husband or a guy, you're engaged, you're going to get to know him in order to know you're going to be with him for life. Well, it's the same way with God. You got to spend time with him to get to know him. If not, people going to run around telling you all about God and you, you don't even know who they talking about. You just, you know, you don't really know him. You just doing it because somebody told you that about him. No, don't let people gossip about God to you. No God gossip. Go find the truth. It's in the word. Again, uh, we're going to go to, we're, we're still in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly. Not grudgingly. Not, ah, I really don't want to give, but if I don't give, my preachers say, I'm going to, you know, if I don't give, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look bad in church. The Bible said, uh-uh. You can't give like that. You cannot give grudgingly or of necessity. I have to give. This Sunday, I've been to church with someone, y'all. <clears throat> real talk. I went to church with someone. And this is real. This person actually borrowed money in church to put it in offering. Have you ever seen that? I saw it live. Live. I'm sitting there. They borrowed money to put in church because it was a necessity that they give offerings. So it wasn't coming from the heart. If you have to borrow money, that's a different story. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a different story if you're in church. And maybe it's not. Okay. Maybe, may, maybe it's, it looks different. I don't know. But if you're in church and you leave your purse in the car, you leave your wallet, and you really had decided to give $30, $40, whatever you decide. And you got a friend with you say, hey, you got $30, $20, and I'll give it back to you when I get to my car. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. You'd have to serve. I don't feel like that would be wrong because you you had already purposed it in your heart. You just didn't have, you, you ran out the house. You know, again, it's the heart. It's the heart, the heart, the heart. But if you borrow money in church because it's necessary for you to put money in church in order to look like you are giving an offering, that's not, mm -mm, that's not good. You shouldn't do that. So it says, uh, so you should not grudgingly or necessity for God loves. <laughs> There's that love word. I told you it's Valentine's Day. We talking love, love, love the giver versus the give to be loved. Now watch this. It's going to end it on this note for God loves a cheerful giver. Now the give to be loved has become the giver of love to God. 
You see, God doesn't want anything that we don't give from the heart. And we, as women, as mosaics that are made, that are healed, that are lioness, that are roaring now for the kingdom, we should expect love to be real. We should expect the kind of love that God says we deserve. And we shouldn't give to be loved. And we should know that we are loved by the lover (laughs) that is the giver. And when we give anything to him, including, including offering money, time, it should be from our heart. So if we just follow the example of how God said to love, when it comes down to everything, you know, you, a man shouldn't, you know, grudgingly taking, take you out on a date. You have to beg him or you have to initiate it. You know, no, no, that's mm -mm. now, now what you're doing is you're, you're, you're becoming someone who is begging for love. And that, that right there is not what God wants you to do. So again, you have to know that God loves a cheerful giver. So if that man is a cheerful giver to take you out on a date, or if you're you're a cheerful giver to someone and you're not just doing it to please them, then God loves that. You're good. You are good. You can give as much as you want. But if you give in to, to make yourself feel like if you don't do it, then ain't nobody can do it for that person and you have to do it. That's not, mm-mm. you're grudgingly giving it and you're giving it out of necessity. And the Bible says, don't do that. Okay. You should always give from your heart and your heart is worth love. And that's why John 3.16 is what we're going to end on. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So you have to know that you're loved. You have to know on Valentine's Day, yes, some women got this. Okay, y'all, this is Look, I don't, this is my prophetic. <laughs> this guy's prophetic ring, y'all. I, I, I think I... I don't know. I think I I think I thrifted this. I think or maybe I bought it at a flea market. But it's a cute little ring, y'all. So I want to end it on this note, okay? Do we want this rock? And we want this rock so bad that we'll take the fake love. Cause this ain't a real diamond, y'all. This is fake, but look how it looks good. I don't know if y'all can see it because it's, you know, but it looks good. And when I put it on my fingers, oh girl, you know it looks good, right? But it's fake. It's fake. It's not real. But it looks good on, you know. So do you want real love from from a fake love? Like, do you want to look like it's it's real love, but you know it's fake? You know that man is rude. You know he's condescending. You know he's a liar. You know he's a cheater. You know he don't respect you. You know he you know, you know he's nothing that God wants. But because you are a people pleaser or because you are a give to be loved, you, you just wearing him because he look good, you know. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and marry this man because, you know, I done told everybody I'm going to marry him. And, you know, uh, I, I don't want to go back to the days where I have to be a Valentine's Day and I don't have a Valentine's and everybody else. Mm-mm, sis, don't do it. You're broken. Let God heal you. Find that real love. Now, do you want this ring or do you want this one? OK, this one, <laughs> not so sparkly. Right. But guess what? It's the rock. It's the rock. It's solid. And it's made to look like this. It's made to look like it it, it can take some beating and be okay. It's not fragile. It's solid. That's that Christ love. It's that rock. It's that, that love love. Okay. So again, this one versus this one. This one looks pretty sparkles, you know. It's probably will get you a lot of likes on the gram, you know. Everybody like, ooh, girl, she got married. You seen that ring? Girl, you seen that ring? But them same people, when they see your husband, the same one you knew you should have married, cheating, or they see him out there, you know, disrespecting you, same people going to come back on the gram and talk about the ring you got and the problem you got. But when you got this rock, when you rocking this rock, if they talk about you, that's part of the plan. <laughs> it's part of the part of the purpose. It's the scars, okay? So, again, ladies, thank y'all for joining me. I wanted to come on here and I wanted to rock it out. I wanted to give you love. 
Okay, but not to give to be loved. I want you, I wanted to be the giver of love. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver, and I'm a cheerful giver today, all by myself, rocking it out with you, get showing you some love. I hope, I hope, I hope, ladies. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's. To my ladies that got this ring, big up to your girls at B B. What is my daughter's Instagram at uh Bivy? Bibi at Blossom Beats. I don't know. She changed it every month. You know, <laughs> scars, scars. But big ups to you, sweetheart. Big ups to you. Congratulations on your first Valentine's Day with your hubby. God bless you. You know your mom endorses every bit of it. Uh, God's purpose and plan is always fulfilled. And if he brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. Always love that man with all your heart. And when you don't love him, love him because God says you have to. And when it gets tough, hold on, give it a minute. And when you fall, fall on your knees, not on your back. Okay. Don't fall on your back, fall on your knees. And in order to keep that marriage in order to keep that marriage where God needs to be, grab your husband's hand and fall on your knees together. And know that when that happens, you guys got this rock. You might have this on your finger, but you got this in your house. I love you, sweetheart. I love you to pieces. God bless you. Happy Valentine's Day, the first time as the wifey. <laughs> I am a proud mom, and I am I am so excited that you are going out on the town, girl. But anywho, to all the other married women, God bless you, ladies. Treat him like a queen, and men, treat them like the queens that they are. Remember, she's not perfect. If she breaks to pieces, put her in God's hands. But you having her that God gave her to you as your, uh, God says, good thing, then no men. That if she breaks, be the one to catch her. Love never fails and it's long suffering. Don't fail that woman. Love her. Love her in her pieces. Put her in God's hands. He'll put her back together and he'll put you guys back together. I want to thank you. God bless you guys. God bless your marriage and your, your matrimony. I hope you got the best flowers in the world. And I hope, I hope, I hope that chocolate don't give you a cavity. <laughs> <laughs> scars, scars. But anywho, ladies, and to my single women, hey, we are loved, ladies. I hope, I hope, I hope that you go home, take you a nice hot bath today, put you on some good music, have you a glass of wine. I'm not promoting drinking alcohol. You can do non-alcoholic. It don't matter. I'm going to have me a glass of wine because Jesus turned water into wine, and I know I'm not getting drunk by wine. Uh, I'm going to celebrate on this cold Houston day. And I'm going to enjoy my pieces. I'm going to enjoy waiting patiently on, on, on the Lord. And I know that I'm loved because he is the giver of love. And with that in mind, when the Lord does let my husband find me, <laughs> he's going to find a good thing because he's going to find a healed woman. And he's going to find a woman that loves the Lord, loves herself knows her worth, and is ready to love him and his pieces, but his pieces put back together. Scott, Scott, <laughs> I love you, ladies. I love you to ruin pieces. Have a happy, happy Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm.